Hey everyone and welcome to a video of the series Beginner JavaScript Practice and basically we're going to be covering a practice problem which is counting the number of instances a particular character appears in a string or a word. So to kind of demonstrate that with some text, if we have a word called let's say choose and we want to count the number of O's that appear in that word, obviously the answer would be two, right? Because we have two O's here. And if we passed in a different word here, such as like fix, uh, that would be a result of two, or sorry, a result of zero. So that is the problem we're trying to solve. Um, to show you how I'm running that in the command line, if I pull this terminal up here, I have a script written already that we can kind of verify that we're doing something correctly. So in this case, the first command line argument, if you know what command line arguments are, basically things you could pass into your program from the command line. So in this case, the first command line argument is the character you're looking for. So I'll say O. And the second command line argument is the word you want to search over. So I do the choose. Notice that it prints out there are two O's in the word choose. And if I rerun that with the same example as above, O and fix, it says there are zero O's in the word fix. So now that we have a good understanding of what we're building, let's go ahead and try to build that out in our editor. So to start off, let's try to break down the problem in certain steps. So the first step is read in the command line arguments to get the character in the word. Okay. The second step is we need to keep track of a count, right? So it would make sense that we have a variable that we can keep a running sum of these characters that we find. So I'm going to say declare a dynamic variable to keep track of the sum or I'll say count. Step three is to loop over every character of the word. So loop over every character of the word. And then inside of that loop, the next step would be if the current character matches the character we are looking for, then we should probably increment the count. And then finally, at the end of our program, we could just print out the count. So that is a overview of what we need to do. Um, hopefully that kind of makes sense as to how you'd solve that before even writing code. Obviously, if you had this on a pencil and paper in front of you, you would look at the word and then scan through every character. And then every time you found the character you're looking for, you'd probably tally something somewhere, right? So that's all we're doing here, but we're going to do it in JavaScript. So let's try to actually start writing out some code to get this operational. So step one, reading the command line arguments to get the character in the word. So what we can do here is we can say const declare an array. I could do two empty um, placeholders with commas because these are, I'll show you in a second, but those are going to be set to node and this is going to be set to the path. And then we want the actual character we want to find. And then we want the word that we're trying to search over. And we're going to set that equal to something called process.argv. And this is, if you're unfamiliar, this is how you grab command line arguments when running in Node. So this will pretty much give you a, an array of strings, and then we're kind of putting those in constant variables here. And this is an ex6 um, feature that you can do to kind of declare variables and set them equal to another array over here. So the second part is declare a dynamic variable to keep track of the count. So let's just say let count is equal to zero. That's pretty straightforward. This is what we're going to do to kind of increment as we find our characters. Step three, it says loop over every character of the word. So for let character of word. And this is a shortcut way to looping over every character in a JavaScript string or array. In fact, we can make that const if we want. Um, step five, four and five should be inside this for loop. So I'm going to go ahead and just Put those back here. It says if the current character matches the character that we are looking for. So how do you check if something matches in JavaScript? Well, if you think back to conditional logic, you have the if statement, right? So you can say if the character we're trying to find matches or equals to the character we're currently at inside of that word, then we can do step five, which is increment the count. So in this case, I will say count plus plus. 
And then finally, we could print out the count down here. So I'm going to say console.log using backticks, you can do string interpolation. So we found count, and then I'll say um, characters to find. So we found two O's inside the word word, period. And I will wrap those in little quotes as well. So it's kind of going off the screen, but basically when we find the count, we're just printing out a helpful piece of text so that the user knows that we found so many things inside of that word. So one thing that is useful for kind of debugging and understanding how code works is to use a debugger. So in this case, we're going to step through using the VS Code debugger. And I'll put a line break here. And before we run this, we need to actually make sure we set up our command line arguments. So I'm going to go over here and click create a launch JSON file. And inside of this little configurations object here, I can say args and pass that an array. And I'm going to pass that in O for our first argument and then choose for our word argument. So I go back. And then in this case, I will just go ahead and click this green start debugger. And that should run our code and have the correct things passed in. So the first line or statement we stop at is the line where we're trying to load in the command line arguments. So if you look here, we have argv, and that has um, an O for index 2 and a choose word for index 3. And if I were to step over, notice that character to find is set to O, and word is set to choose. And these two are just kind of ignored because we're not storing them anywhere. Right, so hopefully that makes sense. Step two, we're just declaring a variable called count, so I'll just step over that. And I'm going to go ahead and add a watch here. So if you right click on the word, or you can highlight it, right click on it, and click add to watch, you'll notice that you have a variable over here that keeps track of that variable as it changes over time. Okay, so moving on to step three, it says loop over every character of the word. Currently the word is choose, and our character is not defined yet, so I'm going to click the step um, action. And that'll take us inside of our loop, and you'll see here character is C, which makes sense because we're looping over the word choose, right? The first letter is C, and then we're checking if character define is equal to C. And in this case, O is not equal to C, so this line will not be executed. So if I click step, notice it'll go back to the beginning of the for loop. And we'll do it again, and then the next character would probably be H. So let's run it again, because that's going to get skipped. And now we're at character O, and we're looking for O. So in this case, we do go into the if statement, and we do increment count. So notice that when I click next, count is became 1. And if I do it again, count will become 2. And then finally, we've reached the last character, and we break out of our loop here. And we'll print out to the console. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this problem. We covered Iridians and command line arguments. We covered looping over a string character by character. We did a little bit of conditional logic to check for equality of strings. And then we did some string interpolation to print out a message to the user, letting them know that they found a certain count of characters. So I hope you found this little beginner's practice problem useful. If you have any suggestions on other practice problems I could do for you all, feel free to leave a comment. And then also remember that all my code that I do on this channel is hosted at Cody Seibert um, slash YouTube, this GitHub repo, which I'll put in the description of the video. And I'll probably have a new folder down here called Beginner Practice Problems. All right, be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.